um, Hebrews chapter 11. Hallelujah. I'm going to read from the NIV. It's a very good, I think, I love the book of Hebrews. Very, what am I, Hebrews chapter 1. It's a very good, very good book to read. And if you, I don't know what's going on with my phone. I did not update today. And ever since then, demons. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's them, man. Look here, even when it's not Satan, blame him, okay? Don't blame your brother and sister, blame Satan. All when it's not him, you blame him. The wicked devil. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assured about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were comm commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at, the, at God's command so that what we see, what is seen was not made of what was visible. Amen? By faith. Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warmed about things not seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became here of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who made her the promise. And so from this one man, and, as, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him and offered Isaac as a sacrifice, who had embraced the promises, was about to sacrifice his only one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And in so, in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's son and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instruction concerning the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him from three months. I, I feel like preaching. I said I was going to preach. I'll take my time. By faith, Moses' parents hid him from three months as he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He pers persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she had welcomed the spy, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, read this part with me, verse 33, who through faith, kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, 
Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Wax valiant in fight. Turn to flight the armies of aliens. W women received back their dead. Raised to life again. There were others who were tortured. Refusing to be released. So that they might gain even better resurrection. Some faced chairs. Flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. Yes. Who said wait? Yes. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskin, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy. Read this part with me. Of whom? The world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Hallelujah. And these all having obtained a good report. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us. So that only together with us would they be made perfect. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The topic for today is walking by faith. Walking by faith. I see something here. When I get into my preaching, I, I see something here that really, um, the Holy Spirit really zoned in my eye on it. I got to find it back now. I don't remember, but I know it's there. The topic is walking by faith. I want you to understand Hebrews 11, it, it repeatedly said something that what some of these people were expecting by faith, they never even encountered it. However, the scripture tells us in Hebrews 11 that not only did they walk by faith, not only did they talk about faith, but the Bible said they all died in faith. Now, some, 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 the reason why the whole, I believe the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart because some of you need to be, your faith needs to be strengthened and as it relates to what is faith. Now, when, when we talk about faith, I understand that some people really don't, even Christians don't grasp the understanding of what faith is. Now, if you ask some Christians, they have memorized Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 so much that if you ask them what is faith, that's, faith is the substance of things over the evidence of things not seen. And he said, okay, explain it to me. What does that mean? And he said, faith is the substance of things over and everything seen not seen. I said, explain it to me. But, but, but they cannot explain. And I, I believe everyone instinctive, instinctively, even without being able to define it in their heart, kind of know what faith is. Now, before I go to what faith is, we have different kinds of faith, okay? Every living human being has faith. The atheists have faith. Rastafarians have faith. Muslims have faith. Gnostics have faith. Every single human being has faith. But not every single human being has God faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is assurance that you have in something or someone. It is full assurance. Okay? Faith is not just believing or hoping. Faith transcends believing or hoping. Faith is knowing. So that's the first thing you want to know about God. Faith is knowing. I use one of the most common examples. Now faith does not depend upon logic all the time. There can be some logic, but most of the time it does not necessarily depend upon testing. I'll give you an example. How everyone has faith. When you go to a doctor's office, have you ever taken up the chair and inspected the chair before you sat on the chair? How do you know the chair is going to hold your weight? Especially me that put on so much pounds. How do you know? Do you sit worried or do you confidently sit in that chair? Have you ever fell off a chair before? And what caused you to fall off a chair? Because you sat confidently when it wasn't able to support your weight. Or it wasn't. But when you go, and I'll explain to you how that's, that's human faith. Because there is, no, there is no prior inspection. There is no research. You're just going off your perception that that chair looks sturdy. And you sit confidently. And when you go to a chair, you never, if it doesn't look, if it looks broken, but if it looks okay, you never consume your mind with worrying about if the chair, 
Only thing is in your mind, can I get a seat? Because when you look in the chair, you sit with full assurance. That's what faith is. Faith is sitting with full assurance or whatever you are depending on has the ability and the capability to do what it represents. Thank you, Sister Odette. So that's why I tell you, everyone has faith. When, when, when a man jumps in his car, every human being, the man has no, even when people go, you know, to go on an airplane, it's faith. Huh? Well, have you ever seen an airplane flying? But we don't think about it. We have, we don't know when last they change the oil. We don't know if gas is in the plane. All we do, we are, we are putting great confidence in the company's ability to maintain their aircraft. And we are having faith in the company that owns the plane. I was going to call a company, but I'm online. I flew on that plane once, and nobody ever going to book me on that plane. Y'all know what it is? Let me stop. I'm alive. I can't. Listen. But none of us go to the airport, unless you have some prior. But nobody go to the airport and say, man, I wonder if United Airlines will last the schedule. No, because you have confidence in the track record. Turn to somebody and say, you have confidence in the track record of the airline. So everyone has faith, but not everyone has faith in God or God faith. Even atheists have faith. For example, they will argue about um, evolution. Okay? But yet still, for something to be counted as fact according to science, you must be able to test it. If you cannot test it, science don't approve it as fact. There are three things. I don't remember what they are. Do you know them, JC? Right. I'm going to give you all some educational lessons. All the young people. Okay? Do you know it, Michaela? All right. That's your tour, your job to research it. And come and let us know. Hypo hypothesis? Uh, yeah, I know. But there are three things. One must be tested. Now, there is no, there is no evidence in the human race of evolution. The, the closest they have is a beak of a bird changing. There is no replication. Evolution is not a fact, people. It is a theory. It is what someone believes. Now, to have such confidence in Darwin's explanation of, of, of evolution, and Darwin came up with evolution, and I know why. Because he experienced death in his life, and he could not explain why a good God would do that to his knees. Now, for a man, because most people when they meet them and they talk about evolution, it's never from a standpoint of I have experienced it. It's, and they say, oh, the Bible is written by man. So what are you telling me evolution? So they believe so much. This guy, I met him one time in the barbershop and he had a long conversation. And he was so convinced about a, um, um, aliens. But yet still he's arguing the validity of the scriptures. So everyone has faith. Everyone. Some people have faith in their family members. Some people have faith in their money. Some people have faith. They have undeniable faith. They have faith. So every human being is in instinctively. There is no human being that goes around not having faith in their heart. However, not everyone has God kind of faith. What is God kind of faith? It is when your faith is placed in God. It is when your reliance is placed on and in God. So we see here, uh, you ask some people, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things. Faith is simply trusting and putting your complete trust in God. Amen? That is what faith is. Now, you can measure your faith and where you are in your faith by how you respond to life. Because, I'll give you an example. If you have 100 million bucks sitting in Chase Bank, 25 in your check-in, 75 in your, in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your thing. I receive two. <laughs> if you are walking, if you are walking, past the dealership and you see a car and it's $50,000. You say, I like that car. You will go access that money. Now, you don't see the money. You know you have it based on an app. But little don't you know how the bank makes money. They take your money and they invest your money. That's why they like to have your money sitting in the account. And when the economy was crashing in 2009, Brother Nation, the bank experienced a problem because everybody was running to the bank to take their money out. But when they went to the bank, even though on paper and computer, the bank said we have 200 million, in the actual bank, it is a very fraction. 
And what they did during the time, I don't know if you remember, they would restrict people from drawing out a certain amount of money for the day. Now, you have faith in the bank because all you have is an app that says you have $100 million or if you still carry a bank book or your bank statement. But you don't see the money. Bernie Madoff, who knows Bernie Madoff? He was an investor and what he was doing, you. He was taking your million dollars and he said, I'll give you um, 250 on it. But the man wasn't investing the money. So now, Cody come and Cody said, I have 200 million dollars and he give it to Bernie. What Bernie did, Bernie out of Cody money, take 250 to pay you. And what he was doing, as you come, you use other people. Who remember that in Jamaica? Some of you don't know that they had some phone that was going. You remember you? They give you 100% on your money. And Jamaican people were. And NCB lock it down because... It's a pyramid scheme. Now you have your money in the bank and it is faith you have in the bank that your money is there based on what you have on paper. It is, you, you trust the bank. That's it. You trust the bank. When you go to that car dealership, you don't question the bank because you trust in the integrity of the bank. That what the bank promises through the booklet that they give you and the big packet, that we will make sure your money is insured, only up to 250000 by the way. Um... They ensure that your money is protected, your identity is protected. They would, you know, give you your interest or whatever. And you walk confidently into that, into that car, car mart. And he said, I need this car. And I said, I said, how are you paying? And you pull out your black card. He said, black card? I don't know. Who has a black card? Whatever card it is. And you swipe. And he said, ooh, okay, sir. And you become their best client. They give you things that other people don't give because they see that this man is loaded. Now you test your faith by your experiences. For example... If that man goes to the bank to purchase that car, and even though he has a hundred million, he's worrying about the money in the bank, it shows that he lacks confidence in the bank's ability to secure his records or his assets. Amen? If you give somebody a bank card to draw money, and even five weeks after you, 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 you check in your checking account. When I, was, when I was younger, they loved coming to my house to give me their card because they know the money won't go missing. Amen? But if you go to the car man and you say, ah, I don't know. <sighs> that card. Kind of, it shows that you don't have confidence in the bank's ability to protect your assets. Now you say, Pastor, wait till it's about car. Because as a believer, wake up, Sister Nathalie. If, if, as a believer, as a believer, if you are going through situations and you are worrying, you see where I'm going? It shows that your faith, you don't have much confidence in God's ability to do what he said he was going to do. Your faith is measured by how you react to situations. And I'm not here to bash you, but I'm here to challenge you that if you're in a position, because there are certain things that happen in our life, and it rocks our boat. But it, that's why the Bible says tribulation, it worketh patient. It brings out the best in you. Because if you have no situation, you see faith, faith is not seen in church on Sunday morning. Faith is not seen when you, your paycheck comes in every fortnight or every week. Faith is not seen when everybody likes you. Faith is seen when situation and circumstances arise in your life. Then you'll be able to measure, do I really have faith? If you lose your mind over everything as a believer, it means that your faith needs some work. Say, Pastor, that's why you are here. Say to me, Pastor, that's why you are here. Yes, that's why I'm, I'm here. It means that your faith, because if, if, if your faith is on the basis of trusting the source that means if i am going to buy a car i need not worry because the money is there the bank has secured my asset so i need not worry even if there are financial hardship i don't see the money because that's what faith is faith is not what you can see that's why faith is not what you can see it is what you know it is what you are convinced and know. I don't just believe and have faith in Jesus. My growth in Christianity has transcended just believing. I know Jesus. So it doesn't matter who comes to me and what script they find and whatever. I know Jesus. Faith is what you know. Because what you believe can change. You can believe it was hot outside. But when you reach outside it's cold. Based on looking through the window. You can hope that somebody will give you your money tomorrow. 
But they say, I don't have it. But faith is not just believing. It is believing and faith is a believing and hope is a part of faith, but faith is not always believing and hope. Faith stands in the category by itself. Sometimes you believe because of the evidence that has been presented to you. But when it comes to faith, when it comes to faith, it is knowing that you know that you know that you know. I am convinced by everything in every fiber of my being that it is so. When God said to Abraham, leave your country, Abraham did not see the land. And this is where, it, uh, this is where we, we stumble because we are, we are human creatures that are driven by what we see. We are human creatures that are driven by what we see. I am looking at the blood pressure meter and I see. And now instead of speaking to it to bring it down, I am allowing what I see. I have spent time in my prayer closet praying for the salvation of my family. And when I come out, they are acting crazy. Now, if you are moved by what you see, it is not faith. Because faith is never established by what you see. If you can see it, it is no longer faith. It becomes hope. But when that's what the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the thing that I hold on to without seeing anything connected to it. It is the thing that drives my hope. It is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of the thing. I don't see Jesus physically. I've never seen him physically. But faith is that evidence that I have. Somebody says, oh, oh, if there's a God, show me evidence. Here is my evidence. It's faith because this is why you notice when a person writes a book, one of the first things that a human being does is explain who they are. Their accolades. You notice how the Bible was, was started. God never takes time out to overextend himself or try to persuade man by bringing up evidence why he's God. That's the difference. Because when you come to God, it is not what you can feel. It is not what you see. It is something called faith. It is believing what he has said in his word and taking him at his word and that's it. There are things that I may not understand. There are questions that I may not be able to answer. But the thing that I know is that God is real. Is that God is alive. I've never seen him. And if you bring me into a lab, I really cannot show you any evidence to prove that there is God. But faith in my heart tells me that there is a God. And the feeling in my heart it's expressed through my understanding of how the worlds were framed. Because when I look at a man, try, try to design a man in your head other than how we would look. You would always revert back to what we look like. If you look at the physical anatomy of a man, if you look at all the enzymes and the, the everything work together in the body, it is like looking at a, at, a, at a picture, a beautiful painted picture and saying that picture came into being by itself. If you look at how your body functions, if you start to get too hot, your body starts to sweat to cool it down. If you don't eat, your body starts to feed on the, 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 the fat. Your body starts to feed on the muscle to extend your life without you having any say in it. If something is coming in your eye, your eye picks it up, your brain reacts. When you look at the physical anatomy of man, how everything comes together so beautifully, it would be looking at a fine picture that has been painted by an artist and say that the picture came out of nowhere. When you look at nature and creation, when you see the artistic scenes and the beautiful demonstrations, and you look and to conclude that this came out of nothing. And I always say, in science, nothing can come from nothing. Something has to come from something. So if we're talking about Big Bang, where did the Big Bang come from? It must be something outside of time and space. Because according to how we know and, and how we think, nothing can come out of nothing. In astrology, 
There are light away, million, billions of light years away that are picked up by infrared satellite. Now, there, it boggles their mind because if it's a billion light years away and the earth is just 200 million years old, it would take a billion years for the light to touch earth. So it should be impossible scientifically for a light, a satellite, to pick up light that's from 200 billion light years away. Ask, ask an evolutionist that he can't answer that. It is mathematically impossible. It is mathematically impossible. So faith is not just, faith is knowing. Faith is having full assurance. This is why as you grow in your faith, certain things don't bother you as a Christian no more. Because you know in whom you believe. When Jesus went to raise Lazarus, he said, Father, I am praying for their sake. For I know that you hear me when I pray. So we, we analyze, and I'm closing, next week I'll pick up. We analyze the, the, the faith in our hearts by how we respond to things that happen in our lives. It will tell you whether you have faith in God or your faith needs to grow in that area. A person who has no food. My, my bishop told a story once. He said he was in his house one morning and as he was praying, the Holy Spirit said, go down to church. The church was going on a bus trip. And he said, the Holy Spirit said, go down to church. Bring some money with you. And when he went to the church, everybody was getting on, on the bus. A sister was standing outside the bus. And he said, he walked over to her. He said, sister, everybody get on the bus. What happened? She said, God told me to come down here. I don't have no money for no trip. But he told me, put on your clothes and come stand right there. So I'm telling you, and you see, the thing is, we, especially America, we live in a mindset, and to be logic is, logical, to be logical is good. But you have to understand that when it comes to faith, sometimes logic has to go. Because logic is based on the possibilities of human being and the impossibilities of human being. That's why when you hear somebody say, they said, it's logically impossible. But we know that all things are possible with God. So if we always say, well, logically speaking, what we're saying, according to the abilities of man, it is impossible. So this is why logic and faith really can't ride in the same bus. Because sometime and most of the time, faith defies logic. It is impossible. The thing is impossible. And this is why Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. I was at Pastor Brown the other night, and this young lady testified. When her baby was born, powerful testimony, she, the baby was diagnosed as art, autistic, fully autistic. They said the baby would never be able to speak. So Ivy can, 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 protest, uh, can, can attest to that. They said the baby would never say, I love you. The baby would bang her head on the wall, on the floor. And the young lady said, I've never, I, I, I don't have any experience with this. Anyway, Pastor Brown as a member that live in, they're in another state, but they come on prayer. She was the caretaker of the woman's child because the state now have to send caretaker. She testified, she said, the first day I reached into that house, the baby starts saying colors. She said, I started to pray for the baby and I started to agree with the mother. The mother said, I used to tell everybody, oh, she's autistic. She said, when I started to come on Pastor Brown, she said, my language changed. Because I realized I was agreeing with her diagnosis. Two and a half years. The baby started to say, I love you. The baby started to talk. Stop banging her head. About a month or so ago. No, before that. Ten specialists. They had to get ten. What, how, many, how many I said? Ten specialists to reevaluate the child. Because something was happening in the child. That's impossible. It's not logically possible. She said last week, to the best of my recollection, or recently, you were there, right, Brother Romani? She, last week, Monday, she said, I had five people that evaluated the child. And they called me to the office and they said, We have something to tell you. She said, Sit down because sit down to listen to this news. She said, But when I went there, I knew what they were going to tell me. They said, We cannot explain this, but the child is no longer autistic. Listen, 
How can you go from severe autism? The doctor say, am I lying, Romano? You was there. The doctor say, we don't know how to explain this. But you know what happened? When that mother, she stepped into the realm called faith. Your money may not be able to do it. Your influence may not be able to do it. But your faith. That's why, because we're logically speaking. We, 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 we be, logic is good, but lo logic cannot enter into the realm of the spirit. Because in the realm of the spirit, there's a different, there are different laws that govern the realm of the spirit. What time is it? <laughs> I, I give you guys that to meditate on this week. I'll pick up next week. Brother Julius, you want me to continue? Listen, if, if, if y'all if say you want me to continue, I'll continue till 5 o'clock tonight and don't. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, and, and this is where we want the church to be. We're not saying don't be human beings, but you have to understand. You have to understand. When, when God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, leave your father's house. Many of you thought Abraham got rich after he listened to God's voice. No. Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. And that was big business in those days. Abraham's father had affluence and influence. And most likely Abraham was getting a piece of that pie. Abraham had a house. Abraham, they, they lived in the city, Babylonian part, or of the Chaldeans. They, they lived, they were well off. Now Abraham one day, a voice spoke to Abraham and said, I am God. And he said, Abraham, leave. Now logically, why would I leave somewhere that I'm already comfortable where my fin I'm financially secured. Why? Why? But when he heard God's voice, the Bible says he packed his bag. God just said to him, I am going to bless you with the land. Abraham had never been to the land. He never saw the land. That's why I tell you, the just shall live by faith and not by sight. Because sight will always lead you back to what's logical. Logically thinking and reasoning. Faith is blinded to the logic of mankind. Abraham could have said, well, God, as some of us, before I take the first step, you have to send somebody to bless me, to give me the first money before I move forward. Abraham just went on trusting the word of God. That's why the Bible says, he that cometh to God must have faith, must believe that he is a rewarder of them because whatever God tells you to do most time, it is on his ability to do. And if you don't trust his ability to do, you will always sit down saying, I'm waiting for the water to be chugged. Faith, the strength of faith is in the person or the thing that promises you something. That's where it is. Abraham could have said, I don't see the land. Oh God, what if robbers rob me? Oh, you know some of us when God tells us to do something. Oh God, what if, what if, what if it turned? Abraham could have said all those excuses. But the Bible said Abraham packed his bag. And he went off. And hear what the Bible says. He was searching for a land whose builder and maker is God. Some of you don't understand is that Abraham, they understood the plan of redemption and how God would redeem the human race. And every one of them were looking for the Redeemer. When you read Hebrews 11, it is not necessarily talking about physical things. When it says they did not see, dying not seeing. It was as they communed with God, he opened their eyes and showed them that a Redeemer is coming. So every day Abraham went out and he would look for the Redeemer. That's why Jesus said in the book of John, Abraham saw my day. And he was looking for it. Before Abraham was. I am. And they said, Abraham don't know you. You are not even 50 years old. Because God has spoken to Abraham. When God said to Abraham, take your son. That's why Abraham is counted the father of faith. Imagine God bless you with the one car. You prayed for it and God said, give it away. And Abraham, he couldn't tell Sarah. Y'all mothers, y'all know who you are. You are. God said, take the boy, go kill him. Abraham just said, Sarah, we soon come back. He couldn't tell Sarah. If Abraham had told Sarah, forget about it. Right, Rika? 
So Abraham said, that being said, husbands, sometimes when God talks to you, if you can do it by faith, just walk by faith. Listen, Abraham didn't tell Sarah. Because sometimes you have to recognize where people's faith are when you are with them, walking with them in life. Not everybody faith. That's why I never impose my faith on anybody. I would pray for stuff for myself that I would not tell you to do. I'd encourage you because not everybody faith. You have, you have, God can provide your apple faith. I have you give me a steak meal. And it makes you miserable if I am imposing on you to believe him for a steak meal. So Abraham knows Sarah. Abraham said, huh? When the angel come, imagine, angels come to my tent. I'm eating with them. An angel said, you are going to get a baby. And Sarah in the back, <laughs> foolishness, <laughs> foolishness. <laughs> By the way, Abraham was the one who laughed first, but he come around. Imagine, he's not pastor come to your house. He's not bishop. He's not deacon. A Abraham sat at, the, sat at the mouth of his tent, and he saw three angels coming to him. Now, now I, I don't know. Sarah's faith must be at the place because if angel come to my house and tell me something, that's all I need to know. Angels. And Sarah on the back. <laughs> the angels call him Isaac. He said, you laughed. No, I didn't. You laughed because her faith. You have to understand, the woman womb was dried. Nothing. People believe it was in Abraham that the miracles are. No. Sarah's womb was like a dried avocado. So when, when angel come, Who's the Holy Spirit? I'm not saying you dry like avocado. Okay. Imagine an angel come to you and tell you, you're going to have a baby. Let me use my grandmother. Grandmother, I'm not saying you dry like avocado. I'm just using this as a point of reference. Because maybe you're the eldest here. I said maybe. I don't know. Imagine God come to you and say, say, Nathalie, you're going to have a baby. You say, who? Because it defies logic. Imagine Mary, after tell. That's why Joseph lifted her and said, Lord, woman, woman, Lord, Bless me with a husband like Joseph. And if I'm already married, let him be like Joseph. Now, Hugh, Julius, Lamar, Tuari, Nation. Imagine your wife coming to you to tell you. <laughs> you're, 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 you're engaged. Not, not going on. And imagine the girl coming and saying, Why, Nation? I'm pregnant. Now, anger is something I don't really, I, I, I don't, Kirk can tell you, anger is something that I battle with. I can get very angry. <clears throat> Even I, I get very, and it's something that I recognize, and the Holy Spirit has really done a work on me. I get really angry. I can lose my temper, really. But thanks be to God. I can talk about it because I'm delivered. Listen, I can get very angry, very angry. I was a bitter child when I was growing up because the devil wanted to make me bitter. Amen? But imagine, nation, fiance come here and say, boy, nation, I am pregnant. Now, Joseph was a good man. And that's why I said pray for Joseph's husband. Because the Bible said, Joseph sought to put her away privately. Now, if Joseph had gone to the street and said, Mary pregnant! She would be stoned to death, which would be some of our reaction as men. But it tells us the character of Joseph, that she was marrying a good man. And Joseph said, huh, Holy Ghost get you pregnant. By the way, that can't happen again, okay? Holy Ghost get you pregnant. Huh? Because Joseph was logically reasoning in his head. No, nobody can't get pregnant like that. And the angel came and said, Joseph, calm down, my brother. He didn't even say calm down. He said, Joseph, don't put her away. No, some of you women are so jealous, not me. That even after the angel says of the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't know anything to do with the woman. Every day you look at him, Holy Ghost mess with you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, every day, every day you're in an argument. Because you see, men, we hold things. Women talk, talk, talk. But sometimes when you get a man really upset, that's when everything rolls out. It's been keeping stuff. Ten years, I will tell you, you thief, you Because so, imagine Mary and Joseph in an argument, and Mary say, Joseph, you know I don't like you, but I didn't like when you did that with the Holy Ghost. Like he was, he was uh, because it takes faith. It takes faith. Faith defies logic. I tell you my testimony. I did not apply for a job, but I got the job. They put in application for me. HR fixed my resume. Other people put in application didn't get it. And when they come into the job, I'm dumbfounded because I don't even know what the job was about. But Wednesday I said, God, Victoria's pregnant and I need some more money. That's all. Now some of you get some blessing and you're thinking it's the Nigerian scammer. <laughs> because faith. So without faith. Because faith is the currency in the realm of the spirit as it relates to God. Just as though nothing is for free in America, you cannot go in a store and buy anything else except with currency. When it comes to receiving from God. Because faith, faith 
gives you or it, it shows you the confidence that you have in the person or thing you are trusted in. So when you got, go to God in faith, e even in not so many words, but what you're technically saying, I am bringing this problem to you because I know you can fix it. I have confidence that you can fix it. That's why prayer is an expression of faith. Genuine, sincere prayer is an expression of faith. They say, oh, you're, you're, you're praying to your sky daddy. Well, my sky daddy has done a whole lot. You're hoping for pie in the sky. Yes, let me eat my pie. Jimmy Clifton said, here's a pie in the sky and I'm going to get mine. Right? Listen, and that's why when I tell people, when you minister to somebody, never use miracle as a substitute. One time somebody tells me, say, Pastor, this person don't believe in God, but I'm going to pray and God is going to heal them. I say, if they don't want to hear the gospel, don't pray for them. Miracle is not a substitute. If they have faith to receive the prayer, they have faith too to hear the gospel. They just don't want to hear it. Because if I don't want to hear your prayer, if I don't want to hear no gospel, don't pray for me in the name of the person who the gospel is about. Because we cannot substitute the gospel or healing for the gospel. It is the gospel which is the power of God unto salvation. Whatever bothers you, whatever troubles you, it is hard to say, well, it's easy to say, and it's good to say. The reason why we face certain challenges and we worry and we fret is because we really don't have faith in God's ability to perform in that particular area. Some of you, you would never worry about money because you know that God is your provider. But if God, if you lose your job tomorrow, or if, 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 if somebody's on your back tomorrow, some of you will, you won't worry about the money, but you will worry about people who are on your back. So it, it shows you that in that area, I need to build my faith. One of the worst things a woman can do to a man is when a woman does not have confidence in the man's ability. Some men don't care. But one of the worst things that a, if you're married, a woman can do in a relationship is doubt a man's ability when he's trying to provide for that family. He feels little. The worst thing a, man can, a woman can say to a man I have some close friends that are, that, are, that are married and one day the guy said to me, his wife work a lot more money than him and he said something happened and when the wife came home she was upset and she said, and the thing is if, if it has to be replaced I have to pay for it and he called me and said, man, and I just have to help the brother wounded soul. That's okay brother. Because I could tell that it wounds him. Now I want you to know this, when you don't trust God, God is not emotionless. He's wounded because what we're saying, you are not able to do it in this area. I don't really have confidence that you're able to do it. Amen? But he's able. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Next week we'll pick up and pray. See? I didn't, I didn't shout our hoop today. I should give for five minutes. Okay, let me start. God is able to do.